you're going to be teaching them in there a few thing or two. You know you will, mm -hmm. because of your life experience and what you've been through and the resilience that you've built up. Next to face the gas is ex Olympian number five, Fatima Whitbread. All right, with me. Stay tight. It was very difficult being at school because I found it very hard to concentrate. Sport really was my saviour. It enabled me to feel confident about myself. You gotta get in and save somebody. Let's go. Here you come. What number are you? Five. Number five? Yeah. You all right? Take your respirator off. Take it off. You... All right. Sorry. <laughs> Take it off. What's your name? Hey, hey, hey. Fatim. Fat, what do you do, Fatima? Uh, what do you do? Soldier. You're a soldier? I say it. Yes, you are. Really? What's the matter? You not like it? That's wrong. <coughs> if you want to leave, you're going to have to find another way out. Please help me. Please help what? Get us out. You want to have a look that way? Seem quite composed there. More composed than these young whippersnappers. You've been gassed before. <laughs> You're doing well. Okay. Thank you. I've known you since a fairly young age. You were like an inspiration to me growing up. Thank you. So I don't really know a lot about you other than you're an amazing athlete. Just go back to where you feel comfortable to talk about. I want to hear okay. about you. Well, I, I'll start from the beginning. You know, I was abandoned as a baby, and some would say left to die, in a flat in London. And a neighbour heard that baby crying for a couple of days and didn't see anybody coming or going. So wow. she reported it, and the police obviously came along, banged the door down rescued the baby and it got taken into to, to hospital where I stayed for six months. Spent the first 14 years of my life in children's homes. So I didn't have any visits. I didn't have any, obviously, any birthday cards or anything to, to sort of indicate that there was anybody out there. I was fortunate to find the love of the Whitbread family at 14. Sport was, uh, uh, was my saviour. Decided I was gonna go to the athletic clubs where we lived. I saw this lovely tall blonde guy over there and he was throwing this spear and I thought, wow, I'm going to go and have a look at that. He said, no, young lady, wait for the javelin coach, Mrs. Whitbread. So that's how I met her. She started saying, you've got a bit of talent. She said, why don't you ask your mum and dad to come up? He said, don't you know? He said, uh, she lives in the children's homes. Uh, within a few weeks after that, she said, would I like to go and spend a week's summer holiday with the family? I said, yeah, I'd love that. And that's how I met the boys, my brothers. They were only two and four, so they only ever known me as big sis. Listen, your mindset's amazing, and that's really 90% of this. You're going to be teaching them in there a few thing or two. You know you will, mm -hmm. because of your life experience and what you've been through and the resilience that you've built up. Finding Margaret, my adoptive mother, was the best thing that happened to me. It enabled me to become humanised again. How you doing, Mother Hen? Yeah, good. Right. How was it? Good. And the most important thing for me was to be able to be a good parent. It's my greatest achievement to date. Towards the back of the pack, recruit number 13, Dwayne, ah. is struggling. Shy away from the heat. When it gets too hot, I can't handle it. My stamina, my stamina lasts 10 seconds. <laughs> this is completely out of my norm. This ain't no track and field training where I just run and rest and chat. There's gonna be none of that. About to be taken. Right, that's it, bro. No. Yes, it is. No. No, f yes, it no. is. Give it to me. No. Give it to me. No. No. Run in there, you pathetic. Uh. Run! What is it that you're struggling with? I want to know if I can still be as good as I was, because I lost a huge portion of my career because of what I did. And what was that? 
I made a decision to take performance enhancers. What year was that? 2002, 2003. How old were you then? 22, 23 years old. How did it feel when it all sort of unfolded? My whole world fell apart. I bet. What, what happened? How did you deal with it? I didn't deal with it. I just kept on hiding from it. Drinking and just doing crap. And not facing the reality of what I'd done. And there came a point where I had to face up and I cried like mad because I realised what I'd done was a mistake. And I know it still screws around with me. When I got the call about being suspended from sport, I lost everything. Mum and dad couldn't help. Friends couldn't help. I believe now I'm in a good mental space. I owe a lot to my parents for making me so resilient. I have asked myself, how can I challenge myself again? And here I am. So I'm going to use this to answer my own question. First to face the crossing is number 13, Dwayne, who performed badly in yesterday's task and now needs to impress the DS. Never realized the impact I'd had on my sport and getting suspended, what it'd done, the damage. And there was a little kid, he wrote a letter to me. And it said, ah, Dwayne, you've been my role model for such a long time, but when you got suspended from sport and you lied, I ripped your picture off the wall and that just broke my heart. Now, I coach near close to 100 kids. You're gonna nail this, number 13. So I almost want to use myself as an example. Everyone makes mistakes, but there's always life after mistakes. It's what you choose to do about them. You're almost halfway. Lucky 13. It's my lucky number. You're nearly there. Good effort, 13. Well done. Now maybe you'll start believing in yourself. Number 13, Dwayne, is the first recruit to successfully cross the ravine and pass the task. How was that? Amazing. Amazing? Yes. It's the slowest 100 metres I think well. you've ever done. 